To celebrate 5000 subscribers, I decided to show you my electric skateboard project in the previous video on this channel. It is by far the biggest project I worked on and it took years to get to where it currently is. I am very excited about the video since it was really fun remembering all of the different versions and things I did to make it work. Everything was covered from designing the enclosures to building the battery pack, but there was just one more thing left that needed to be done to make it truly complete and that is the remote controller. The remote controller I used to have was a DIY remote called Firefly which was designed by Solid Geek over at GitHub. I won't be able to show you the original thread since it looks like our eSkate Builders forum is down, but the Thingiverse page is still up, as well as the code and build guides on GitHub. It was a really nice remote, but I started having some connection issues recently and I just didn't have the time to tinker with it anymore, so I finally decided to go with an off-the-shelf version. The new remote I'll be showing you in this video is the Flipsky VX2 remote. It is an awesome upgrade because it has a huge screen with telemetry that shows you all of the information you would want to see while riding. When choosing the new remote, I just couldn't accept a basic one with no screen, since I got so used to having all of the information always available. By looking at remotes with telemetry, I didn't really find many options. Most of them were DIY projects and the only off-the-shelf options which looked nice were from Flipsky. I've been in contact with them for some time now and they offered to send me a VX2 remote for a review, which is awesome. So, it is the Flipsky VX2 remote. It fits perfectly in my hand and I love the screen on the front. It has many options like reverse mode, cruise control and different speed modes. In this video, same as always, I will show you what's inside the box and how to set it up. I will show you all of the options on the screen and then comes the final test and my opinion since I have used it for about 2 months at this point and I feel like I did test it enough to give you a final conclusion. The remote comes in a pretty simple box, but you can see that everything is well protected with a bunch of foam from all sides. Inside we get an actual user manual, which is awesome. Then there is the remote controller, and under it lays its receiver for the VESC. Then we get a couple of cables, and the first one is the USB charging cable, which is sadly a micro USB one. Beneath the USB cable lay two more cables in the box, and these are used for connecting the receiver to the speed controller. The user manual is simple, but is written pretty well. There's a version in Chinese and in English. Everything is well documented, and I had no trouble setting up the remote. The receiver looks like a pretty simple device, made from just one PCB. To protect it from external shock and moisture, we get a piece of hitching that goes over it. The small wire coming from the receiver PCB is the antenna, but there is also a new FL connector next to it, which makes connecting an external antenna possible as well. On the bottom of the receiver PCB is a connector for connecting it to a VESC, but on the back side you can see that all of the pins are broken out and there is a pin out on top to make connecting everything together a bit easier. The remote looks really nice and is coated in some kind of a rubberized plastic, which feels pretty high quality, but I'm kinda afraid it will wear off in a few riding seasons. The wrist strap is already installed and next to it we have the unfortunate micro USB port. I really wish this was a Type-C connector, but at this price there's literally nothing else that can beat this remote, so I won't complain. The remote has two buttons, a scroll wheel and the main display. Pressing the power button for a second turns the remote on and doing the same thing again powers it off. We can go through different speed modes with the button on the bottom and pressing this button while holding the throttle all the way back will put us in the reverse mode. Holding this button for a bit will put us in the settings menu. Cruise mode is activated by pressing the power button shortly while riding, but I cannot show you this feature while the board is not moving, so I will show you how it works later. The display is large and really easy to read. It is bright enough to read outside and these are the things that are displayed on the screen. The biggest part is the speedometer, which can be set to miles or kilometers. The remote will calculate your speed with the RPM, wheel diameter and your pulley ratio. Once you set these settings right, I found it to be pretty precise and close to what my phone measures with the GPS. On top of the screen you can see your direction mode, your board charge status, as well as the remote battery status. I wish there was a percentage indicator or a battery voltage readout since these bars don't tell you much data, but it doesn't take much time to get used to them and there is a pretty great way of telling how much battery you have left by using the odometer on the bottom. The battery bar isn't perfect, but once you get used to it, it gets the job done. On the left side of the screen you can see your speed modes. There is high, medium and low. I never had speed modes on my VESC before and these are pretty neat to have when you're riding surrounded by other people. The medium speed mode for example is much more precise when you're just cruising around compared to high speed mode. One more cool thing with these is that when someone asks you to try out your board, you can simply put it in low speed mode so the board doesn't fly away. On the bottom left of the screen you have your odometer, which resets every time you reboot the board. It's a really cool feature to have so you can test your real range. It can also be helpful because you can easily tell how much more you can ride before needing to recharge. 
On the other side on the bottom of the screen you have your current meter, which is again a pretty cool feature which I didn't see before. It was really cool seeing my braking currents for the first time for example. I would love to see a voltage meter and let's say a power meter, but these are the things you get when you are going with a DIY option and the advantage of something like this is its reliability. I used to have many DIY remotes before and I did lose connection to the board countless times, while with this one I feel much safer since I never lost connection and it never acted strange. It may not have all of the crazy features you get when building a remote yourself, but it really is the best you can get in this price range and the reliability is more important to me at this point since I did fall a couple of times because of a bad remote connection when using a DIY remote. Connecting it to your VESC speed controller is pretty simple. And to show you, I will first disassemble the VESC enclosure on my board. I will unplug my old DIY receiver and simply plug in the receiver that came with the new remote. The receiver connects to the UART port and you should connect it to your master VESC if you have two connected together like I do. At this point the remote will work. There is nothing else you need to do, but you will notice that the board battery voltage meter doesn't work. I am not sure why they couldn't read the battery voltage from the UART, but to get the battery meter working, you will have to connect one more wire to the B plus pin on the receiver. I connected the wire from my battery positive terminal to the B plus pin, and after that, everything worked. I put the provided heat shrink over the receiver to protect it, and that was it. After that was done, I put everything back together and it took no more than 5 minutes to set up. I didn't touch anything in the VESC configurator and the remote just worked after I plugged it in. Once that's done, there is the settings menu on the remote which I didn't cover yet. I'll power on the remote by holding the power button for a second and with the board connected I will hold down the other button until the settings menu appears. The first thing to set is your battery cell count, so the remote can tell how charged your battery is. The next option is to set your motor pole per count and then the speed unit which can be set in kilometers per hour or miles per hour. You can set your board to be in a pulley or a hub motor setup and then set your wheel diameter. All of these settings should help you calculate your speed but there is one thing missing and I will show you what it is when the settings menu is covered. You can set your pulley teeth count and calibrate your throttle which is awesome. Then there is the pairing mode which can be used to connect the remote to a new receiver and the last option is your ESC type. FSESE is a VESC type built by Flipsky and it is what I use. The other option is Fogbox and to be honest I couldn't tell you the exact differences but it is a different type of a VESC controller. All of this is pretty neat and it is pretty simple to set everything up but there is one thing with the settings that doesn't really make much sense. There is no way to set your motor KV and once you set all of the settings the speedometer just won't show correct values. I am not sure how they calculate the speed but to fix it I played around with my gear ratio for a few minutes until the remote started showing the correct speed. Since then it was working perfectly fine so that's the fix. I used my phone with a GPS speedometer app to help me calibrate the remote. Once you power on everything, the remote connects instantly and the connection is solid. There are no dropouts or weird glitches like I had with my old DIY remotes. The connection is really stable and that's the reason I went with an off-the-shelf option. Once you play around with the settings for a bit, the speedometer becomes really precise and compared to a GPS one, the speeds are almost always the same. The board battery charge bar is pretty large, so it is easy to predict how much more you can ride before recharging, but I also found myself using the odometer to get the feeling of how much I can ride before stopping for a charge. And time for a final conclusion. I don't like the micro USB port, the fact that you need to connect your battery directly to the receiver to get the battery measurement readout, and the speedometer settings are just weird. Other than that, I would say that this is definitely the best off-the-shelf remote you can get if you want to have telemetry and don't want to pay more than 50 euros. Most of the remotes with telemetry are DIY projects and other options are just too bulky or expensive to consider in my opinion. Flipsky also has the VX3 remote, which is waterproof and targeted more at e-foils and e-surfs. It's much bigger and for an electric skateboard I would say that it's just not practical. The other one is the VX4 which is much smaller and should be the upgraded version of the VX2 but it comes with a much higher price so I think the VX2 is the perfect sweet spot. There are a few downsides but overall I'm pretty happy with it and I hope you enjoyed watching me talk about it. It will complete the electric skateboard project for this season and we will see what will come next. Thank you all so much for watching, if you want to see more electronics projects, reviews and guides, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.